Welcome back, fuckers. All right, today we're going to run through a really cool uh, thing we've been doing on stream of late. It's called DCS Liberation. So I'll put the link to this in the description. This is the, uh, the actual place where you download it. And like I said, I'll put the link in, get amongst this. So once you go to the website, download it, install it, and then you're going to open it up. Make sure you run it as an administrator as well. Otherwise, it um, doesn't do what it's supposed to. So run it as administrator. When you open up, this is uh, 2.1.5. And if you're watching this at a later time, this is probably going to look different because they are pretty active in tweaking it, making it look better, making it um, function better as well. So this is your main page. So we're going to go into how to set up a new mission and then we'll work our way through how to set up uh, flights, buying units, and all the rest of it. All right, so let's quickly get into this. We've got new game. We're going to go next. And here we go. We've got player faction and enemy faction. So player faction, you can choose. they got a shit in it. Okay, whatever, whatever era, whatever. Uh, if you want to do World War II, you can do Cold War. You can do uh, modern. You can do USA aggressors. Like, whatever you want to do, you can choose. Same deal with the enemy faction. They've got a heap of... Uh, Heap of enemy, uh, enemy aggressors that you can fight against depending on what map you want to use. So we're just going to set it to where are we? Russia. There we go. And it tells you kind of a, a list of things that you're going to come up against, so you can kind of uh, keep your figure out what you're going to be doing. Going to go next. Now we've got to choose our map. So you've got full map, full map. Full map, so we're going to go with the full map, but it's got smaller versions. So if you don't want to do the whole full entire map campaign of trying to take over air bases, you can just do a smaller one. So we're just going to go Caucus full map. Full map. All right, start date. You can choose if you want it to be, uh, you know, snowing or whatever. Just leave it there. And then here is our options. So we've got miscellaneous settings. Start at mid game. More important when you're doing a full map. If you don't want to do the entire full map campaign. Um, starting from scratch with one base, you can start at mid game if you want. Um, and then you've got generator settings, no aircraft carriers, no LHA, use supercarrier module, no player or navy, no enemy navy. So you can turn any of that on. We're going to turn on supercarrier because I like it. And we're going to go finish. Let it do its thing. Once it loads up, we'll quickly go through uh, the settings for the actual mission file you just made. And then we'll. Caller done, baby. Okay, so this is the map. And again, if you use Syria, you use Persian Gulf, it'll look exactly the same as this. You'll have a red line, a blue line, and orange dashes. Okay, orange uh, lines there. So we'll go through what all that stuff is in the next video. Today, we're just going to go through, you know, your uh, settings to set up the mission. So we're going to go into the miscellaneous settings up here. And difficulty, pretty straightforward. Player coalition skills. This is your AI. So if you're using um, AI aircraft to do things for you, you can set their skill. Enemy skill, pretty straightforward. And then enemy triple A and vehicles. Again, I like having it on uh, max everything. Make it as hard as possible. More challenging for me. Uh, In-game labels, turn them off. That shouldn't even be a thing. Just turn the labels off. What are you doing? To, don't use labels. Dirty, dirty labels. And map visibility options so you can again on depending on how hardcore you want to make your your campaign you can have it map only so you can't even see your own map you can have it allies only you can have it uh, own aircraft only whatever you want allow external views all that shit okay so that is pretty much we'll just go own aircraft only that's that mission generator gameplay use supercarrier module so if you don't have the supercarrier make sure you don't check that box. Otherwise, you won't better use the carrier to uh, spawn off because you don't have the super carrier module. Put objective markers on the map. So when you go to F10, it will put markers down. Um, yep, up to you if you want to do that or not. Have a JTAC if available. So it will spawn a JTAC in that will lay targets for you if you would like and enable JTAC smoke markers. You can turn, again, all these on or off as you see fit. Uh, the next one, performance settings, disabling settings below may improve performance, but will impact the overall quality of the experience. Smoke visual effects on the front line, SAM start in red alert mode, artillery strikes, moving ground units, generate infantry squads along vehicles, AI planes, parking start, AI starts in flight if disabled, include destroyed unit carcasses. So I pretty much uh, leave all of that on 
Uh, sometimes I'll turn off the infantry just because the JTAC, if you're using the JTAC, the JTAC will laze a soldier instead of um, the actual vehicle and you end up just wasting like a, a bomb on one little man instead of lazing a uh, tank or something that the infantry guy is standing next to. So I turn off, turn infantry off, but again, up to you, you can leave it on. So the last one, and probably the most important, is this bad boy here. When you're doing a full version map, okay, you're doing the full map, culling of distant units enabled, really recommend having that on. Turn it on and set the distance to 100. Okay, just leave it at the default 100, and that is that. And I'll show you what that does. So the front line is essentially the bullseye for your... Uh, or the mission file that it makes. So when you turn culling on, you essentially are putting a 100 kilometer radius around the front line, and anything in that 100 kilometer radius, the mission or ZCS Liberation will load in all the ground units, all the aircraft that is in that range. So for example, we click on Cobaletti, we can see they've got three SU-30s, three MiG-29Ss, and three SU-33s. They've got an SU-25, an SU-24, and an SU-25. And they've got some BMPs and BTR-80s. All right, so we can see there they've got nine cap aircraft. Go to Kolki, they've got another six aircraft. Go to Kataisi, they've got another six aircraft. Go to Sukumi, they've got another 12 aircraft. Go up to Gadara, they've got another 12 aircraft. So if you don't put unit culling on, on the very first map, very first sortie, you're going to have all these airfields spawning in planes and sending them straight down to you. So you're going to end up fighting like 50 plus AI aircraft set to excellent with missiles against you and your uh, your ragtag, not very established um, first sortie. And you're just going to get smacked. All right. So if you're doing the full map, make sure you put unit cull on. And then that way, if you put on 100, it pretty much loads Cobaletti only. So you'll only have to deal with nine aircraft. You'll have to deal with that. Okay. Cobaletti. And then as this orange line advances or retreats, the front line goes with it and the unit cull just goes off of that orange marker. All right, so that is pretty much how to get your mission set up ready to go. Uh, one more little thing, when you have got it ready, you can go file, save as. And what I like to do, I've been doing this on stream, uh, because it's still, you know, getting tweaked and things happen, things break. I like to each mission, I'll save it, whatever you want to call it. We're going to call it YouTube zero one. All right. Save it so that once you complete the mission, once you generate the next mission file, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes it will corrupt. All right. And then you won't be able to uh, continue with the campaign. It just won't load, won't load the mission up for you in the mission editor in DCS world. and you pretty much all your progress is gone. So if you save each individual sortie by itself, um, if you do have a uh, a game, you know, a file corruption happen, you can kind of roll back to the uh, the mission before, fly that one again, and then hopefully it doesn't corrupt on you again on the next one. So that's a good idea. Um, you know, you can see we're up to uh, on the, the stream campaign we're doing, we're up to mission or sortie 11 we've done on the uh, campaigns. And I've just saved each one, so just in case, because we've I've been stung before, where um, it just you know you just have one save file, keep saving over the top of it, and then when once that file corrupts, you lose all your progress and you just start again. Right, it's a pain in the ass. Sweet ass boys. All right, hope that helped. I hope uh, you learned something there. If you haven't heard of DCS Liberation, definitely recommend giving it a go. So the next mission, our next video will be going through how to actually um, use the the mod okay separate standalone mod to dcs and how to get your missions up and running and all the rest of it so if you like the video make sure you go ahead and hit the like button and if you haven't already subscribed to the youtube channel we just busted past 350 followers racking on through it's absolutely crazy thank you you legends fucking champions uh and lastly but not least i do stream on twitch monday to friday at 1300 australian western standard time so if you haven't already come on by and check me out there Say good day, and if you've got any questions about anything, ask away live on stream. And if I can't answer it, hopefully uh, some of the mad lads that come in and hang out, DCS diehards as well. Um, between all of us, we can hopefully uh, point you in the right direction and give you the information that you need. 
Alrighto, fuckers, catches on the next one.